and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to one that I did a few months ago that you guys really seem to enjoy, and that is five thrillers that you can binge read in one sitting. So these are books that are really fast paced, have a really awesome plot, and just keep you going. You do not want to put them down and you just want to spend your whole day on your couch with a cup of coffee and just read the entire thing from front to back. I did a video on this a few months ago. You guys really, really enjoyed it. So, and I know that I definitely have more that I can add to that list. So that is going to be today's video. So the first book that we're going to talk about today is The Dogs by Alan Stratton. This book follows Cameron, who is a preteen boy, and he is on the run with his mother. So they have been on the run for a long time. This has been a long time since I read this book. I want to believe that it's from his father or his stepfather, something like that. They've been on the run from him for a long time, many, many years, and they end up moving to this house that's basically in the middle of nowhere. It's just like in an old kind of abandoned farmhouse, and they end up moving there. And I'm just going to read you guys a couple of things off the back. It says, out of the corner of my eye, I catch something moving by the barn. When I look, it disappears. Wait, there it is again at the cornfield. Some movement, something. Mom and I have been on the run for years. Every time he catches up with us, we move to a new place and start over. But this place is different. This place is full of secrets and they won't leave me alone. So we have kind of like two mysteries unfolding here. There's something going on with this house. So there's a little bit of a spooky element there. Um, but then they also are running away from this man that is going to hurt them. So we have kind of the thrilling aspect of it there. So like I said, this one I read a long time ago and I believe I gave it a five. Um, and it's only, I think it's 200, yeah. 282 pages. So this is one that you definitely could get through in one sitting if you want to just sit there with a giant cup of coffee and just plow through a really good thriller. This one definitely makes the list. This is a book that I have spoken about on my channel before, and that is Bad Girls with Perfect Faces uh, by Lynn Weingarten. And this one I read when I was pregnant with my second son, Dawson. And I basically did read this all in one sitting. We were at a hotel. I was very, very due. And we were like, we live about an hour away from our um, largest city, which is where I have to go to give birth. <laughs> um, and there was going to be a huge snowstorm. This was uh, in November of 2020. And uh, so we decided to get a hotel in the city just in case I ended up going into labor because I was very, very, very pregnant. And I just had the feeling that my son was going to come at any day. And so we got this hotel and we just kind of like locked ourselves up. This was at the height of the pandemic. We locked ourselves up into this hotel room. We ordered takeout and my boyfriend watched TV and I read. <laughs> I read this basically all in one sitting. Um, this one follows Sasha and her best friends. Um, so it says when Sasha's best friend Xavier gets back together with his cheating ex Ivy, Sasha knows she needs to protect him. So she poses as a guy online to, er to lure Ivy away. But Sasha's plan goes sickeningly wrong, and she soon learns to be careful of who you pretend you might be, or you might be surprised by who you become. So this one is told in multiple points of view. You get to see her perspective, you get to see um, Ivy's perspective, and I believe you get to see her friend uh, Xavier's perspective as well, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, this is kind of more of a psychological thriller. Once again, it's quite short. It's only... How many pages is this one? 285. So yeah. <laughs> so I read this one all in one sitting. So I know if I can do it, you can do it as well. And this one just like keeps you on your toes. At first, like you're not too sure you're kind of on the, you're rooting for this girl. Like she's trying to protect her friend. And then she starts making some questionable decisions and you're like, I don't know about this girl. <laughs> and there's kind of some twists that start to happen that you really start to wonder what's going on. And uh, it definitely keeps your attention focused the entire time. So the next three books are all ones that I read on audiobook, and the first one that we're going to talk about is Grady Hendrix's <laughs> My Best Friend's Exorcism. And this one kind of, I guess I should say, it's kind of like thriller slash horror, because obviously it's about somebody being possessed, which is pretty scary. Um, but what I loved about this one, it is quite short. Like I said, listen to it on audiobook, listen to it no problem in like a couple of hours. Um, and it basically follows two best friends and they kind of, you kind of get to go on a journey with them and you get to find out like when they first became best friends and their story kind of almost reminded me of my story of becoming best friends with my best friend and we've been friends since grade two, I think. Um, and, uh, 
and it was also set in the 80s which I really loved I love stories that are set in the 80s I don't know why <laughs> I guess it's just like makes me homesick I was born in the late 80s but I love stories that are set in the 80s so I really loved it for that reason but one of the girls ends up becoming possessed and the other one is basically the only person that kind of is catching on like she's noticing really strange things going on with her friend she's trying to be taken seriously when she's trying to express her concerns to their other friends, her parents, whatever. Um, but things start to really unravel really, really quickly and nobody really believes her and everybody kind of starts to like start shunning her because they just think that she's being jealous of her friend and whatever. Um, but it's a really, really good story. Like I said, there's a lot of really spooky scenes. I listened to the audiobook and it was really spooky at times. If you're physically reading it, you might not get quite as creeped out, um, but there's definitely some thrilling aspects and some horror-ish aspects as well. Next is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, and that also was an audiobook that I listened to, so I'm going to read the synopsis from Goodreads, and it says, The secrets lurking in a rundown roadside motel ensnare a young woman, just as they did her aunt 50, 35 years before. In this new atmospheric suspense novel from the national best-selling and award-winning author of The Broken Girls. Upstate New York, 1982. Every small town like Fell, New York, has a place like The Sundown Motel. Some customers are from out of town, passing through on their way to someplace better. Some are locals trying to hide their secrets. Viv Delaney works as a night clerk to pay for her move to New York City. But something isn't right at the sundown, and before long she's determined to uncover all the secrets hidden. So we end up kind of unraveling the secret. Basically, this girl ends up taking this job as a night host uh, for a motel in this town. She has had an aunt that went missing years and years ago before she was ever even born, and it's always kind of been like a family secret, something that her family never really talked about, but something that she's always been very, very interested in. And she decides once she graduates that she wants to find out what happened to this aunt. Her aunt was never, ever found. So she kind of follows her footsteps, trying to figure out what happened to her, and she ends up in this small town, and she ends up taking this job working at the exact same hotel that her aunt worked at, and she's trying to figure out what happened. Her her aunt ended up going missing from this hotel while doing this job. Um, so that's obviously quite creepy, <laughs> um, but we follow that and we kind of figure out what has gone on. I will say, once again, I did kind of figure out the twist, um, but that's because I read a lot of thrillers, so you might not figure that out. Um, and this was a really fast read for me. This was a page turner, and it just has all the kind of creepy, um, feelings like I mean you have like a creepy motel and you have a girl working there by herself she's working the night shift and adding to that knowing that somebody has gone missing from that exact same job years before it's like it's almost like history repeating itself while she's trying to find out what has happened to, the, to her aunt and the last book that we're going to talk about is one that I had mentioned on here before. Um, I think I talked about it just one time, but that is Baby Teeth by Zoe Stage. And this one is super creepy because it is about a mother and a daughter. And this is like something that's just horrifying to even think of happening because basically, you know, your connection with your child is supposed to be very strong. And a lot of people don't end up feeling that way toward their child. And that is kind of what is happening in this story. So you think. So basically we have, we have the perspective of the mother and she is not connected to her child whatsoever. Her child almost seems evil in her presence, but anytime she's around anyone else, she's just completely different. And the mother really, really, really tries and she's just like all the time trying her hardest to be a great mother and to, you know, just like make this connection with her kid. But she is truly starting to wonder if there's something actually evil about her daughter. Anytime that she goes to her husband about and voices these concerns, he just thinks that it's all, you know, just in her head or that there's something wrong with her as a mother because she's not connecting with their daughter. But it's more than that. Like we are seeing the scenes happening and we're realizing throughout the book that something is not right with this child as well. Um, um, it's almost like the child kind of pits the dad against the mom and there's just like really creepy things that she does <laughs> and uh, so we kind of follow this mother's journey as she tries to deal with this it comes to a climax in the book obviously obviously I'm not gonna say what happens and <laughs> spoil it for you guys um, but there is a climax in the book that is quite scary <laughs> so we'll just say that and um, we follow along with this journey that this mother has to go through um, and just trying to figure out what's going on with her daughter. All right, you guys, so that was five thrillers that I think you can read all in one sitting that you will absolutely love. These are page turning books that you will not be able to put down and I pretty much guarantee that you will like them. 
If you've read them in the past, make sure you go ahead and let me know down in the comments whether you like them or not. And if you've decided to add any of them to your TBR after watching this video, also let me know that as well. I love to hear those stories as well. Anyways, I hope you guys are having an awesome day today and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.